Welcome back. Today we're continuing with the soul in the, the old fuel tank room. So it should be good to actually get it so we can walk through. All right, let's get stuck in. So we left it last time. It's a bare frame, didn't we? So I've been trying to work out how to panel this out. I think this one here is going to be one solid piece because that's going to get the most traffic and it's the least usable space down there. So basically it's going to be ballast down there. This is going to be potential battery storage and stuff like that. So this might be separate panels. But I think for now we'll just focus on getting that big one in because that's the most complicated one. So let's see how we're going to go about that. So for a very first cut, <laughs> it's not actually that bad, is it? I was expecting a lot worse than that. Makes you want to just stand on it now, but... So now we've got it close, what we'll do is find a large gap. So that's probably our largest gap there. So we'll now get our compass and we'll just sort of go a reference from there now. So now we'll go We'll take off that much, so then we'll take off that much, and then we we'll sort of just go around. Oops, a bit wrong there. there. It's hard to do this in film. So we've got all of our reference points now, then we'll just sort of straight line all these. Straight line across there. We could get it into the actual hull, but we like a bit of ventilation. Because like, otherwise you're completely sealing in the hull, aren't you? Do any moisture or whatever you want to yeah. vent it a little bit. So yeah, we'll take this back out now. We'll um, straight line all them, then hopefully the next time it goes in, it'll fit really well. Okay, it's good enough. So what I did, I marked the center of the beam. So we know where to cut. So we now put a straight line right across this here now, then that'll land right in the middle of the beam. Right, so the template fits really well now. So what we need to do is, is 
make it out of marine plywood now. Um, but what we need to do is put an angle on it. So the angle to match the hole, otherwise it'll just be like a bit, a bit rubbishy, won't it? So we'll just take an angle, an average angle from the web frame, if anything it can be it's slightly steeper. So that can be our angle there. What we're going to have to do is cut it from the bottom and then put the angle up. So the template is on the A4 sheet, so we know that this is the top. So what we want to do is flip this over and then cut it from the bottom. Then when we cut an angle, the angle will be going out, so the piece will actually get bigger at the top. So but if we draw around this now, and then we set our saw at the right angle, Obviously all, all these will just be square cuts. That'll be a square cut, but all these angles where it meets the hole and the web frames will be on an angle. Right, should we go and see if it fits? All well, the angles. Obviously I've not sanded anything yet because it might need a bit of fine tuning, but... So by my struggle then, I'm thinking between there and there is narrower than there and there. Or is it just technique of getting in? So I think next time it has to go in like that, like that, down and then in. That's a note to my future self. Right, so I think what we're doing now is take it back out and then epoxy all the edges and then we can then paint it then, can't we? And then we can then work on the rest of them. I'm out of breath now because of that. That was a fight there. I've just mixed up some epoxy, so we're going to allow epoxy all these end grains now in the plywood. So when they get wet, because you know what we're like, it's getting wet somehow, isn't it? So it's going to, it's got like a tiny bit of thickening in it. So we're going to go around all this now, and then um, once this is dry, then we can paint it then, can't we? It's dry! And we've got a helper as well today. Woo! A helper. <laughs> is that right. what I am now? I'm just the help. <laughs> right, so she's going to put this one back in, and then we'll start making some more of the soul but it's all so boards aren't they soul boards yes i no doubt Jen will paint them at some point yeah <laughs> gotta paint them haven't we well let's even get this one back in without all the dramas of the last one the last time i put it in <laughs> all right so when i got it out i figured Oof. So full. Oh, that was easier. Let me stand on it. Careful. Testing its strength. So it's only made of oak and 18 mil. Cool. Right then, should we get the next bit of floor in? So we've just been having a debate about how to panel this floor. 
So I don't know whether Simon's told you, we're actually making the floor lower than it originally was. Because if you remember, there was battens on top of all the engine bearers, but we're lowering it a little bit. Basically, to save all the extra work of putting battens all the way up. <laughs> no, it's not. Sure, people don't understand. It's because now I can actually stand up and not bang my head like that. So by low lowering the floor, we've actually made the floor narrower because the hole sweeps up like that. So it's actually slightly narrower. But you've got more head height. But we've got more head height. And as well, they're the original height of the engine bearers. So in the 80s, they actually built it up. So. so because of that, then we've got pieces like this that are sticking up. And obviously we want our floor to sit flat onto the new bits that we've done. So we need to get rid of all the sticky up bits like this and this and this. <laughs> so it's time for the multi-tool. So while Gemma's doing that, I'm going to measure up. What we're going to do is just get the floor in as big as we can. Um, we do it four, 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 the four foot boards and then we can also adapt it at a later date. This wire throughout this area of the all the work on this area has been doing me nothing. It's basically the transducer wire, the through hole. Um, should have pulled it out really or unrooted it but it's kind of in the way all the time but I think we'll just leave it for now So I've got a pesky wire in my way of doing the floor. It's basically the through hole, the transducer, which measures our depth, which never worked anyway. But it did. I don't think it did. If you want to go and try it now, we'll be floating in a minute. It just used to beep and say we we're gonna we we're run aground. Don't blame it. Anyway, what we need to do is get rid of the wire. So we have a cut the wire, which is probably not a very wise thing to do. So what we're gonna do is trace up where it goes up into the into the wheelhouse, and then we're gonna bundle it up and put it in the bilge for now. It might come in handy in the future. Uh, give it a wiggle. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So now we'll trace that wire and see what, see where, where it goes to. I'm guessing it goes to that one. But hey, we'll confirm that now. So I've just turned it all on and all it does is beep. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a log. My old log. Well, we'll be floating soon. That might um. Okay, so the water's coming in. So we'll wait for us to start floating. Can you sort of keep your hand on that one? Because I can't work on both sides. That one. Yeah. Yes. Found it. So that's our fish finder. <laughs> Does it work? Do we need a fish finder? So this is a video fish finder. I'll just switch it on. I don't think we've ever had this on, have we? No. I bet this is like proper classic. <laughs> It's definitely pretty rainbow, isn't it? Oh, well, there's a, there's a plug out. 
we've got some power to it. Yeah, let's see if we can fire this up. <laughs> I know we started off doing woodwork today, but it turns out we're trying to figure out why this 1980s fish finder <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> Not that we've ever seen any fish around here, but... Yeah, but cause that's because we haven't had our fish finder on. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, we don't need Raymarine. So, what's the verdict on that? What's the verdict? What we need to do is trace this, um... <laughs> Maybe that's why it doesn't work! You got your multi tool out! That's so funny! <laughs> right, um, let's, let's throw 24 volt. So it's... that's why the multimeter didn't pick up anything? Oh, hang on, no, it's 12 volts. It's yeah, 12 I know. Volts. How do you know? Because it says it on there, oh, 12 volt DC fish finder. <laughs> Okay, let's throw some 12 volts across that and see what happens. Whoa, it works! <laughs> Bottom. Oh yeah, the water's 7.2 degrees. What are we, so we're 0.1 off the bottom at the moment. Yeah, fishy, fishy. <laughs> Right, okay, that's, uh, that's really cool. Right? Right, so I think we, we leave this plugged in for the day and we'll see if it, see if it measures our depth because we're, no, we're nowhere near off high water yet. What do you do with it now? Because obviously it's not really much use to us. <laughs> Is it a classic? Is it actually worth anything? So it's working stably, so now at the moment it's basically, I think they're saying we're like, what was it, 0.1 of a metre? Yeah, I think this is the bottom, like the floor, so there's the depth, so there's zero. There's... F is that metres or feet? Oh, it's on a minute. No, it's M, metres, so we're at one metre. Is that, is that right? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to see if that changes, because the tide is coming in at the moment. So we were technically just just started to float now. So we'll keep monitoring that and then we'll go back to the thing that we were doing before, which was wondering what we're doing with the wire. I think we're just gonna leave the wire for now because it's fun. <laughs> so That's the most fun wire. I'm quite boat. interested to see that if a fish did go it's under the boat. the boat. It's not but on this 80s technology, what would it look like? Is it better than the latest Raymarine stuff? Let's find out. <laughs> right, we've got our middle piece in now. And I think what Gemma's preparing for now is she's going to set up to epoxy the edges of these ones. We'll use our fast epoxy, then hopefully it's dry in the next couple of hours, then we can then paint these. In the meantime, what we need to do is start looking at the, at the port side of the fuel tank room. That hasn't got any fuel tanks in it. So like the starboard side, all of the ply that they've sandwiched this all together with is delaminating. So we need to really change the ply, even though it's not carrying any fuel tanks anymore, is it? All it's gonna do is carrying the floor, but we may as well replace the ply, haven't we? All right, let's get a strip down. So we don't need that, we don't need that, we don't need that. And we know about that, so let's get rid of all these little bits first, and then we'll get into the big bits. Well. What was the noise that someone spent ages making all of this, and then? Something like me just to come along and strip it all down and throw it in the bin. You okay? Uh. Oh. Where's it hurt? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever watched Family Guy. There's that lowest, like, ah, ah. It's 
So I think we should call Gemma Lowe. Not really, hey. Well, show us your bruise, huh? <laughs> no, no, <don't> look away. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, that was quite impressive. I'll take it back, call my Lois now. That's, that's, that's a good one, that. Oh, can you say that again? Well, I haven't got my phone in short. <laughs> so I'm quite impressed. That that was a good one, that. That hurts. That, that really hurts. And I was being... Dramatic. I was being... I was trying to be stronger than what I physically am. So I'm down here, sanding the... Um, the edges and I need to do this underside so I've still got the sander going here I went like that and then I slipped and the whole weight of the board just come down on my leg well, they are amazingly heavy these oh yeah that's gonna sting in the morning you well, this you got a day off tomorrow no <laughs> <laughs> you like peg? Because you have a peg leg. I'll make you a new leg. Right, your stupid fish rider keeps beeping. Should we go and see what's going on with that? Oh. Are, you, are you beeping? It's just like drama, isn't it? So Gemma might be on light duties all day today. The hell? Right, so it's like 1.5 meters. Do you believe that? I don't believe that. I don't know why it's beeping. Maybe it should be. There might be some instruction manuals online. That's the most painful thing what, that's happened to me in quite... What childbirth? I don't know, you know. Pod has popped out, doesn't So I think this big old water pipe can go as well. made a mess but well, the same as the other side this one wasn't attached to that bulkhead which is structurally not perfect right so she's coiling up a bit she doesn't look the best but she's nice and solid so we now need to make a piece for the front there that we can bolt to that and then once the plywood bolts to it then that will all be part of the bulkhead because it's it was never originally part of the bulkhead which I find quite interesting and then we need to make a new piece for the middle here Right Gemma's done a fantastic job of cleaning up So what we need to do now is start making this a bit more secure. I've checked my level across with the string line again just in case this pops or anything like that. Um, if, if anything it, would, it pops slightly higher so I've just put a temporary screw in it there for now just to hold it down. Right so first job is to make a piece to go here which is then going to be bolted to the bulkhead. Then when the ply goes on then that'll secure it all. So what we're not going to do on this side is do like we, we did some notches didn't we? But we can't really do that in these here. I'm sure we could, but um So yeah, we need to, we need to make a little piece to go in there, then we can throw some bolts for it. So I'm cutting this by hand because we've got plywood, we've got painted plywood upstairs, it's drying, so don't want to take any dust upstairs, do we?
dropped a hole in a paint. <laughs> but it's the like one of the last tins of paint we've got, so I need to like collect it off the floor. Oh, but it's going down the hole, so you might get a bit of paint on your head down there. That's in the engine room. Well, yeah. we're going to inspect the engine room. Might put a bucket under it. <laughs> well, that's a new place to put paint, isn't it? Not too bad. I don't think you should drop that much, really. It's all good. So that piece fits now, so what we need to do now is look in to see if our original template for the starboard side fits the port side. Yes, but because you've glued this bit in, when we put our template in, it's going to get loads of glue everywhere, so I'm just going to tidy up your oozage. You look tidy up, don't you? No. You do? Well, one of us has got to do it. There you go. <laughs> So thank you for SD Frost for sending us that mask and tape from the Amazon wish list. Cover it with some mask and tape. Well, apart from, because this is different on this side of the boat, and I don't actually know what they were for. It cable runs. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No. So the height's actually like... It's identical. Bang on. So the boat's symmetrical. <laughs> well, that's odd. Because that's the only thing that is symmetrical on the boat. Well, no, it's odd because obviously this side's original and that side that we made up ourselves. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but we did <laughs> we did set the level, didn't we? Hmm? So, yeah. So that did. means we've done it right the other side, does it? Yeah. Cool, right, so let's get... Let's make an alteration to the end here. Right, see if she fits. So Sarinda celebrated her 80th birthday on the 20th of December. Can you believe she's 80? And as a way to celebrate this momentous occasion, we have released a book. This book is about the radar operator that was on our boat in 1944. And he kept a diary of every day, which is so fascinating to read. So we know where Sarinda was every day during 1944. So we've released this book on Amazon. You can get it on an ebook, a paperback version or a hardback version. And also there's a lot more information in there about World War II, about all the different ships that were involved and also a bit of our story. So I'll drop a link in the description if you want to go over and check it out. All the proceeds for the sale of that book will go towards helping restore Surinder. So now we've just got to wait for the paint to dry and then we can put it all together. That'll be great, won't it? 
But while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'm going to go home and rest my poorly leg because it is killing. So thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Are they fish, them little lines? I don't know. You reckon there's fish around there, do you? All right, there's probably, a, might be a crab. <laughs> might be a log. I don't understand why there's like a solid line now and then like a floor line. Be a double bounce. So we're starting to float more, so you can see the depth just increased. 